today I'm going to talk about strawberry plants. I have some here and I have some with the pineapples. And the ones in the pineapples are the ones I'm going to really concentrate on today. But I can't wait to show you how many blooms there are down in these barrels. I'm so excited. I can't wait for fresh strawberries. Hi, I'm Debbie. Welcome to my organic garden here in Central Florida. All I have near is I have not provided. I used these barrels last spring and I grew a ton of sweet potato vines, which I then transplanted to the garden and they did pretty well. Now they have lots of strawberry plants. And this first barrel here has some wild berries that I planted. And quite honestly, well, the plants are okay, but they're not making any berries. And I have a volunteer tomato plant here too. The rest of the barrels have strawberries that I planted about two months ago. And I do have a video about that if you want to learn how to, how to plant strawberry plants, both the bare root kind as well as the plugs. So they're doing quite well and I want to show you up close what's going on underneath the netting. So what's up with the netting? Well it's for protection. I don't like sharing my strawberries with the birds and there's a moth that likes to lay their eggs and then it becomes these caterpillars that like the berries as well. So this is an effort to keep the moths out. I know it's going to work on the birds, but I, I think it'll work on the moths. We're going to see. The last time I grew berries in here, I couldn't figure out what was eating the berries. I could never find them during the daytime. So I decided to come out when it was dark. I shone the light and there was the ugliest brown caterpillar I ever saw. and so. I guess it came from a moth, but once they were in there, I couldn't get rid of them. They were difficult to find, and well, I don't use pesticides, so I found it really difficult to get rid of them once they got in there. So that's why I have the netting on here. But these plants are loaded with blooms, and there's strawberries already growing. Come on in closer. I want to show you. One of these plants is just going bonkers. Though I see that there's going to be some blooms pretty soon on these other ones, this one is the showstopper. I've counted seven flowers and berries that are already bloomed or growing some berries. Look, it already has a uh, strawberry growing in there. Now, I don't recall seeing berries that look like this. You see how there's three on one? I have no idea how that's going to turn out. I've never seen that before and I've picked a ton of berries in my day. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to turn out. But let me show you what's in the rest of these barrels. So this is the first barrel that I just showed you. And this is the next barrel. We've got some blooms here. See how they've made three on one? I guess they'll be okay. I've never seen that before. Here's some more blooms. I'm just so excited. I can't wait. Look at all the ones on this one. Aren't they pretty? And then some more over here. We've got a berry here and another bloom. And that's probably going to be a bloom down in there. I can't tell if it's a leaf or a bloom. You see how they make the leaves from the crown. Now this barrel right here in the front, they're all uh, from some wild plants that I pulled up alongside of the road in North Carolina. And honestly, I will be surprised if they do anything. They're growing new growth here. And I actually even got a bloom one day, but they never really 
it didn't make a strawberry. So I don't know if it's looking for um, colder weather or what, but I did put them in the refrigerator for three or four weeks before I planted them to kind of fool them into thinking they had had some winter. But I don't know if I fooled them enough. <laughs> Only time will tell. Well, here's the rest of my strawberry plants planted around the pineapple. It's a super big experiment, but they seem to be doing okay. I want to show you what these look like compared to the ones in the barrels. So we have one here that doesn't even have a bloom on it yet. And then right next door to it, look at all the berries on this one. And though the plant itself is not very full, it still has a lot of berries. And I'm not worried about that because this is the way they look when they're young. And then right next to it, we've got one that's not doing so hot. So I think what I'm going to do is make sure that I haven't buried it too deep. This one's getting blooms. Another one with blooms and more blooms. Here's some that's going to be blooms in another day or two. So these are doing pretty well, even though they're right next to the pineapple. And as you can see, we are in some shade here, and they don't get a lot of sun until afternoon. And I think it's probably around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So they get direct sunlight in the early morning until about 11. And then they get sunlight again in the afternoon from about 3 until about 5.30. So here is what I'm going to do to protect them. First, I'm going to drive the stakes in, and then I'm going to cover the entire bed with this netting here. Now, if you want to know how or more information about this netting, I have a little one-minute video that you can go watch. It's one of my first short videos that I did where you can find this and what a good deal it is. And I already used this this last spring on the tomatoes and now it's going to be used again. It is a little bit of an investment at first, but it, you can use it over and over and over again. I found some shorter ones. I love working outdoors. One, three, let's get six more. This is my trustworthy bucket of old clothespins. I have old clothespins and good clothespins. The good clothespins are for those things that I hang out. And yes, I do still air dry, sunshine dry my clothes. So you might be wondering, well, what about the pollination issue? Strawberries only need the wind. They don't need uh, bees or anything like that. So um, this netting will allow for the breeze to blow through. As you've seen on my barrels, I thought maybe I was going to have to take a fan out there or something. But no, there's enough breeze that blows through the netting to do the job. I'm telling you, the robins around here are so clever they will walk up underneath or they'll come and peck through so that's why i, I kind of want to make a little bit of a tent here
I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do this. But this is what I do with the tomatoes. I match them up and then I roll them in on top of each other just to give a little bit of extra security. And so if you roll it up together like this, even if you don't have a clothespin there, clever little moths can't make their way up inside there. I know some of you might be saying, you're using perfectly good boards. Why are you using them outside like that? Well, they came off our porch that had been up for probably 25 years. And I think it's a pretty good use for right now until we need them for something else. So they're still gonna get plenty of sunshine. They're gonna get the breeze that they need for pollination. And I hope that it keeps the robins and the moths out of my strawberry plants. And there you have it. I think it's going to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's worked for tomatoes, so why not strawberries? Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and look through those playlists. I bet there's something there that's going to be helpful too. Lord, unto 